consider this photograph. Besides looking like a print ad for Calvin Klein, it tells a pretty simple story. Being alone in a crowd. The first thing you'll notice is it's black and white. The absence of color forces us to interpret the image purely through the dynamic range of light and shadow. It also calls attention to the setting. The crowd comprises a sea of tuxedos and fancy dresses. This is a black tie affair. You'll notice the crowd is out of focus. Only the subject remains clear and sharp. The photographer has used an extremely shallow depth of field to effectively isolate the subject from everyone else. The framing further reinforces this isolation, while the anamorphic widescreen aspect ratio emphasizes the volume of the crowd and the space it occupies. From here, we might start to fill in a backstory for the subject. Perhaps he's at a high-class fundraiser, one only available to the prohibitively rich. Maybe he's made his life goal to reach this point, leveraging assets and making power plays at the expense of all else, even personal relationships. Now he's realizing just how empty he is. This fantasy underpinning all his life hasn't brought him happiness. But at this point, he doesn't know if he could ever pursue anything else, if he could ever be anyone else. So he just stands and watches, feeling powerless for all the power and wealth that surrounds him. Now consider that this photo comes from the photo mode of Uncharted 4, the PlayStation 4 exclusive action adventure game. This brings us to the main point we're going to try addressing this video. Can video game photography be a viable art form? Before we get started, let me just say that any conversation about photography as an art form is going to be almost inextricably tied to questions of ownership, credit, and intellectual property laws. These issues, while important, do less to address a medium's value as a vehicle for human expression and more to define the terms of commercializing that medium. So we're going to hold off on discussing those elements for now, instead focus on what value, if any, the field of game photography presents for both the participant and the audience. Perhaps the most readily apparent value of video game photography comes from its potential as an educational tool for real-life photography. Robust photo modes in modern games such as Uncharted 4 and Infamous Second Son allow players to experiment with real-life photography concepts such as depth of field, lens angle, exposure, saturation, and so forth. Even the standard screenshot available to PC players offers an exercise in the most fundamental activity of photography, framing. Imagine if, as a supplement to real-life exercises and assessments, students in art programs could engage with in-depth experimentation of photographic techniques in a risk-free, near-limitless virtual environment. Considering even entry-level professional camera equipment can cost thousands of dollars, game photography could mitigate the barriers to entry and allow unprecedented access to high-level photographic fieldwork. Players slash photographers could see what works or what doesn't, start developing their own style, or even discover whether or not they really have a passion for photography before they ever touch a camera. Now, I refer to it as a near-limitless environment, and I think it's interesting to discuss the limitations of game photography. First off, obviously, there's a huge limitation in that players can only photograph what the developers have created in the game. Furthermore, players may be limited by the tools of the photography software included. Only a handful of games offer photo modes as feature-rich as Uncharted and Infamous, and even those impose limitations based on the player character's position in the game world. When compared to the literally innumerable opportunities for real-life photography, you may be tempted to write off the medium entirely as too claustrophobic to present any creative opportunities. But this is a sword that cuts both ways. While no game world can offer as many opportunities for creative photography as the real world, there are some opportunities that can only be experienced in a game's virtual environment. How many amateur photographers actually have access to the mountain villas of Italy, or the untamed jungles of a South Pacific island? That's not to mention the completely fantastical worlds offered by less real-world inspired titles, like No Man's Sky. Furthermore, there's something to be said for limitations actually promoting creative work. There are already thousands of player-generated photos of Uncharted 4's sweeping vistas. And while impressive, the type of photos that I find truly interesting are the ones that attempt an artistic statement through perhaps a smaller focus, use of unconventional angles, or an interesting synthesis of the game worlds presented. In any game without a fixed camera, there's an effectively infinite number of images to capture. The more powerful the photographic tools given to the player, the more potential for a player to express their individual tastes and sensibilities through the image they choose to capture. No two photographs are alike. Even knowing exactly where in game the image comes from, it would be all but impossible for anyone to recreate that exact image. It expresses something unique to the individual who took it. Now we really do need to talk about those issues I alluded to earlier regarding credit and ownership. 
Obviously, the developer of the game deserves credit for any value a game photo may present. Without the artists, programmers, and designers, the world that allowed that photo to be taken literally wouldn't exist. In fact, I would be willing to go so far as to give special credit to the coders who developed the tools the player uses to take those photographs. Photography doesn't exist in a vacuum. Photographers are both limited and empowered by the tools and settings they have available. Every photograph is a collaborative work. But let's give the player photographer their due credit as well. When a player decides to take a photo, even a simple screenshot, that image reveals something about the person who took it. Something they find meaningful about the world in which they interact. And meaningful self-expression is something we could always use more of. One final word about intellectual property laws. They are not on the player's side. Even though game photography is an emergent medium without a lot of case law to back it up, it would be foolish to try to commercialize any photography taken in a virtual environment at this point. Read your EULAs. In almost all cases, legally speaking, the game's copyright holder holds the rights to those images. At best, the player photographer is creating a derivative representation of a creative work, and there's plenty of precedent for lawsuits surrounding this. Even the designer who created the famous Obama Hope poster was sued by the Associated Press for its likeness to the photograph that seemingly inspired it. I'm not blaming developers or publishers for exercising their ownership rights. They're just operating legally within a copyright system that is, quite frankly, outdated and in massive need of an overhaul in light of 21st century intellectual property issues. Creative Commons is a great step towards addressing this, but realistically, the traditional copyright model is likely to inform the vast majority of court decisions moving forward. Of course, this does nothing to address legal gray areas such as Let's Plays, so all we can really do is wait and see. In the meantime, I'm excited to see what players do with the new opportunities presented by game photography. Who knows where it will lead? It's not inconceivable that one day a photography student could include a section in their portfolio devoted entirely to game photos. As to whether this field will ever be widely recognized as a valid form of artistic expression, that's a question for society as a whole. I'm just happy that it's being asked. Be sure to chime in with your two cents in the comments. Can a game photo be a creative work? Who should have the rights to that work? Will we ever see acceptance of game photography outside a niche audience of hobbyists? Let me know what you think. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.